Hi everyone, my name is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog dedicated to building science and fine craftsmanship. I'm here with my head carpenter, Bill Wood. Bill, how are you? Good, good, thank Another you. Another fine framing job for Bill and his crew. Uh, check out our advanced video, advanced framing video that uh, we did on a previous house. We use those same techniques here. The purpose of today's video is to show you the best practice methods for installing a window. Bill and I have done uh, quite a few remodel projects and we've seen a lot of leaky windows in the past. This is really, as far as I'm concerned, where the rubber meets the road um, with being a first class builder. And so we wanted to lay out for you kind of the steps that it took to really do a window install the correct way. Bill, thanks for joining me today. Give us the, uh, give us the overview of where, how we've gotten to where we are right now. Well, first of all, we've, we've framed up our window and, and got the openings correct. Um, Another thing that we do that we like to do is we like to shim up our sills mm -hmm. and, and you can either cut your cripple studs on a little five degree angle or set a shim in. So you've got a little outward slope to your sill. Um, next thing we did is we wrapped our house uh, with the Tyvek. On this particular job we used the Tyvek Commercial D. Yeah, Commercial D is really my favorite uh, house wrap. Um, commercial wrap is also a, a pretty much the same product without the crinkles. Uh, they're a little tougher than the regular Tyvek home wrap and have a, uh, a less of a high perm rating. I like this lower perm rating on the commercial products. Um, but either way, all the uh, Tyvek family are really good products. Highly recommend those. And then one thing to notice too, Bill and his crew have also used the, uh, um, the uh, cap uh, staples as well. So when we staple this, we're stapling with caps which helps a little bit for weather sealing, but really even more importantly is to make sure on a windy day like this that our Tyvek's not getting blown off. Exactly. Okay, sorry Bill, didn't mean to interrupt. So we wrap our house, we uh, just like we do on all of them, we will cut the flush, the Tyvek flush with the sill mm -hmm. at the top and the bottom. We'll wrap our legs in, so we've got protection there. And then what we'll take uh, is our DuPont flex wrap mm -hmm. and actually run it from the inside of the sill all the way down the face and this flex wrap is great because you can actually make a 90 degree corner and you just you, you you wrap it up and then you pull it down and it actually makes this corner real good and it just sticks great um, so we'll handle that that way and then at the top we cut from the corners we cut up 45 and 45 on each mm -hmm. side so after we set our window flange in um, we'll, we'll first cock the window flange on three sides yep. So we get a good air seal, and then we have a means of escape for any moisture that may get inside the window. Bill, let me interrupt you for one quick second. Uh, Bill went through this very quickly, but this sill pan that we're making on site, I cannot stress the importance of this enough. No matter which brand of manufacturer you have of windows or what you happen to like, uh, this architect specified gelled wind. We want to assume that those windows can and will leak. Uh, I heard, I've heard some stats from uh, Joe Lestibrick, one of my favorite uh, building scientists, that, uh, gosh, now I'm, I'm going to butcher the quote. I'll, I'll, I'll link it on here, but it's something like 10% of all windows leak. And the problem is the manufacturers are not putting a sticker on there to tell you which ones are going to leak and which ones aren't. So we have to assume that every window is going to leak, which of course it will in time. So what we're doing here with the sill pan protection is incredibly important. Do not miss the step from protecting your sill from water that may intrude, especially at the corners um, where your window frames are coming together. That's an important step that I cannot stress enough that that must be taken on every house. Absolutely, man. Okay, that's, sorry, Bill, didn't mean to interrupt. That's so true. And, and really, too, you know, with any of these products that we throw at, at these houses, we really need to be careful about how we're applying these products, yeah, yeah. how we're installing them. And you just have to think about what a window does in an opening. It's just a perfect place for water and, and air to get in. So you really have to be careful with how you seal these. All right, so we're back. What we've done is we put our caulking all around three sides, top, both sides. And not on the sill, correct? Not in the sill. We want a means of escape for any water that might get in there. And we've laid our window up there. Today what we're using is, uh, because we have a bunch of windows on our first floor that all need to be lined up, what we did is we ran our laser level from inside. And this just ensures that all of our windows are all common and one constant level from the inside. And that really helps you a lot when you come to trim stage. Um, and really on the exterior as well. So everything lines up by side as well. Yep. So we've got our window set in. Everything's perfectly plumb, perfectly level. We've got it centered in a hole like we like it. 
Um, we've got it lined up with our second story as well, if that's the case. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and what a lot of guys will shoot the, uh, shoot the windows in with a nail gun. What I like to do is I, I like to use a roofing nail. It's got a big head. It's galvanized. You can get a good fit and, and the, the pneumatic pressure is not jostling your window around or crimping the flange or anything like that. So typically if we're setting a window and it's out of square, we'll start at one corner and then work our way to where we need to be. In this case, everything's perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start right here and throw one in the bottom to stabilize that. Go ahead, Chewy. Okay. And then after we throw that one in the bottom, do you normally go in and double check the laser, make sure everything's uh, still intact? We'll do that if, 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 you know, sometimes windows are problematic, sometimes they're not. So far, all this has been going well. So what we'll do before we get too far, point in, point in. Come, it's actually our last window. window in the whole house that we yeah. set here. So we'll throw a few nails in, we'll check it again, we'll check the operation. Um, sometimes. Okay guys, so we've nailed our window in. Uh, now we're, what we're doing is coming back with our straight flash. And of course, we do our legs first, both sides, and then we come across over the top of our legs with our headpiece, and that's below our Tyvek, over the top of our flashing. And then our Tyvek will come down and uh, lap over the top of the straight flash, and then we will Tyvek tape the 45 slices in the Tyvek. Uh, we like to use this roller to get a, a good solid bond because this is what's making our bond here. And we just roll this straight flash on down and the bottom does not get done. We leave that open and this is the proper way of setting a window and flashing it correctly and ensuring that you don't get any water infiltration. And if you do, it's got a means to escape. And that's the name of the game. I think the only thing left to do, Bill, is uh, we're gonna tape the 45s in the straight. And with that, we're gonna use the regular Tyvek tape, the, uh, the clear uh, plastic looking tape. Uh, straight flash is being used on the two sides and the heads. And just a reminder, do not tape that bottom flange right there. Where that, uh, where that bottom flange is, we want to leave that open so water can weep out. And when our insulator comes in a couple weeks, we're actually going to be back talking the window jam to the framing on all four sides on this job after we use our uh, low expansion foam around the jam. That way, both uh, air infiltration will be stopped with that back talk. And the other big thing for us, of course, is to create a bit of a back dam for water at that sill area. And that's where that back rod and that cock is gonna come in. Hey, Bill, great job, my friend. Shake my hand, my man. Thank you very much. Nice job, buddy. Nice working Appreciate with you. Appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.